Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I'm going to cover a little bit of my take on the very incomplete and very inclusive study done on The Biggest Losers. It was just released. Now, a lot of people are talking about this. A lot of people have sent me various links to this who want me to cover this, uh, enough so that I really need to cover it when I get that many people requesting it. And the thing is, uh, this is I knew this would be sent to me mainly because I am one of the outspoken people in this community who do not believe in metabolic damage, or if people are trying to call it metabolic adaptation now, I think it is something largely that is a hoax done within the fitness community to sell reverse dieting and uh, metabolic repair by some very, very uh, sketchy characters in the community. And furthermore, I think it's an excuse people use to explain why they, they get fat again after they come off of a diet. It's not really real. So let's dig a little bit into the data that we have here. And I want to remind people, again, this is a very incomplete study, not done in the best control of conditions with only 16 subjects to work with. You're not going to be able to draw meaningful conclusions here. You're going to need to look for trends and things that you can find wrong. You're never going to be able to take a study this small and draw uh, absolute conclusions of any type from or even say that something is real or not. Now, one of the things that I find interesting, when you look at the uh, weight gain, the changes in body weight, changes in fat, changes in muscle, according to their studies, because again, this was done looking at people at the start of the 30-day week challenge, at the end of the 30-week challenge, and then six years later. So they've tried to keep up with this stuff. Now, number one, you're looking at all of them across the border, at least the average. They all seem to have gained quite a bit of weight again over the six years. They all gained a pretty large amount of fat, and most of them gained a little bit of fat-free mass, which would indicate muscle for the most part. Now, usually any loss in metabolic rate, the biggest uh, contribution for base metabolic rate or resting metabolic rate is going to be the loss of muscle mass, and the loss of body weight overall. So these factors show that their metabolism should have gone up. Now what's even more interesting, when we go look at uh, the hormone panel, this is uh, something else to consider. You've got a hormone panel to look at. I'm not gonna get into all the hormone panel because you guys can uh, read the interpretations of all that yourself down in the study I linked below. But uh, the biggest hormone normally linked to metabolic rate, the one that everyone talks about, that's always talked about when it comes to resting metabolic rate, is T3. The thing is, their T3 all went down at the end of it, but their T3 is higher on average. The average T3 from their blood work now, six years later, is higher than before they started. It's the highest it's ever been at any point in any of this. So by all accounts, Everything medically that we would normally look at to uh, determine resting metabolic rate shows that their resting metabolic rate should have all gone up dramatically again at the end of the six years. But the thing is, it doesn't. In fact, the resting metabolic rate went down slightly over six years. There's no actual explanation that we would have for this just looking over the data we have available. They gained muscle on average, they gained large amounts of body fat on average, and their T3 went up dramatically on average, and yet their rest of metabolic rate went down further. Again, that doesn't seem right, and even when you account for the, the changes in age and everything else, it doesn't add up. And the problem is that, uh, so what are we to make of all of this? Well, I'm going to make a suggestion that with a sample size this small and not being done inside of a metabolic lab, that the resting metabolic rates determine the way that they determine them using CO2, oxygen, and everything else inside of a room after being fasted, because they didn't control the conditions around the days leading into it more, maybe some of them dramatically changed their lifestyle even though they were instructed not to, because again, we don't have any way to explain what's going on here. There can be human error, there can be issues on the part of the individual. Maybe these people, some of them did something different dramatically, even though they were told not to, that we can't confirm because we don't have controls in place for that. And when you're doing a scientific study, having controls in place to account for these things is everything. And particularly when you see results like this that aren't really explainable. Because you had a couple of people, if we go look at the chart with the individual resting metabolic rates, they have all gone down. Some of them are really, really low. Like, how do we explain that if you look across the board, there are a number of them, if their resting metabolic rate dropped dramatically over that six years.
So these are people who at the end of this dramatic uh, weight loss have seen enormous reductions in their resting metabolic rate while having an average increase in muscle mass, fat mass, and T3. All right, that doesn't make sense. So maybe, just maybe what happened is that the actual resting metabolic rate tested at the end of the 30 weeks was inaccurate. Let's think on that one for a minute, because at the end of the 30 weeks, that's the one that doesn't make sense. If you go all the way back and look at the resting metabolic rate at the start of the contest, and you look at the resting metabolic rates they're having today, that could be more indicative of the, the slightly lower weight loss that they have. But I think something went wrong with the testing of the resting metabolic rate at the end of the 30 week challenge. Something was mismeasured and their resting metabolic rate was actually being measured much different than it really is because that's where you see the lowest t3 levels that's where you see the lowest body weight and because they had been doing something really extreme for 30 weeks for the, all this time they did something really really extreme maybe something in there skewed the numbers as far as things like their co2 output for a little while and their resting metabolic rate had dramatically dropped lower than we measured it uh, under laboratory conditions during that time because everything else over the last six years says that the resting metabolic rate should have gone up and even then the, the extreme weight loss that we saw was over so any additional loss in metabolic rate should have ended at that point it should have normalized by all medical explanations and then gone up slightly instead it went down further but there has been no extreme weight loss to explain the the further lowering. In fact, everything shows the, that it should have gone up. T3 is, is this the highest it's ever been. So I'm going to suggest that there were some flaws with the actual data gathered. And until we can get this normalized and we can get better controls in place to explain this, uh, it, it doesn't make sense medically what we've seen. And the most likely explanation for these unexplainable results is that the actual measurements done at the end of the 30-day challenge, there was something that was measured incorrectly on enough of the people, or if not all of them, because again, methods change over time. We don't know exactly what they did to take those measurements at that time, but that their actual resting metabolic rate was measured incorrectly. So again, we're dealing with such a very small sample in an uncontrolled setting that it's difficult to draw meaningful conclusions. And uh, again, when you see something like this, it doesn't make sense. You've got to look for the simplest answer. Again, you have to use Occam's razor and say, what's the most reasonable and simple explanation to explain this when nothing else will? That the data was possibly gathered incorrectly on several of the people with such a small sample size that uh, a couple of Mismeasurements with such a small sample size at the end of the 30 week challenge in their metabolic rates, uh, depending on how they calculated it back then. Because again, I didn't see anything listed, uh, details explaining that. Some people have even suggested somewhere that they were trying to calculate it based upon their estimated uh, TDEE minus their various energy expenditure to determine it. And that's really a problem. Because if the method used to measure that post 30 week resting metabolic rate is not the exact same methodology and measurement used uh, for six years later, then we have to throw it out. The data is not useful for an apples to apples comparison. Because uh, again, if we have an apples to apples comparison, we don't really have a good explanation other than there's been some problems with the, the actual collection of data. And that becomes a really big deal in something scientific like this because we're dealing with a very, very small sample size. Again, 16 people only. No, no study in the world will we generally accept 16 people is enough to draw major conclusions. It's a start. What we would actually need to do is do 10 or 15 more similar studies on groups of people and then plot all the data comparing all of them in a meta-analysis. So people need to understand that when you're dealing with a single study of a small sample size like this, there can be major things that go wrong and something as simple as a miscollection or inappropriate comparison of data from the stuff six years ago versus today because a different method might have been used uh, to determine that resting metabolic rate 
then something as simple as that will completely skew the data and make it useless. And again, I would like to suggest that that is very possibly what happened. You know, and I could be wrong here. And that's the thing when you're dealing with science, when you collect enough data from a plethora of studies and you can find unbiased studies with no one with any bias involved because there are definitely people who make money off of metabolic adaptation. So their bias can't be looked at with all of this. It has their, their data oftentimes has to be thrown out. But when you have enough data that is unbiased, you have to change your opinion even if you're strongly held in your convictions. That's how science works. And I like to use that rule myself. In this case though, this is very, very limited data with a very logical explanation for what could explain something wrong and this would never be enough for any reasonable person looking at, at scientific evidence to change their mind it's simply not enough information and data it's not strong enough evidence yet but it is a start so let's do another 10 studies and see where it goes all right guys well that's really all i have to say on that today i hope it's been informative and i will talk to you guys next time